you didn't watch our last video, then you don't know. We're in a city trying to find cell phone cards. And we're in like <laughs> one of these moto taxi tuk tuks. Flying through the sky in my parachute Dancing on the couch like I'm Tommy Cruise On a one-man mission trying to see it through, yeah I got the password, yeah I finally got the password Added up the numbers, now the math works I got the way to make the path work All these lights turning from red to green Time is everything And it feels so good to shine Like every day, no more working at or ballet. I had to rock the boat so I could ride the wave. Yeah, I got the password. Yeah, I finally got the password. Laughing because I got the cheat code, the light. Fair, we all gonna be alright. So come and get it. I, 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 I'm living my best life. Living my, living my best life. All right, as usual. It is difficult to get our SIM cards in a new country. We think we're working. But we've got good help. So I'm not sure if we told you. In Peru, masks are still required by the government. So they're back on in most places anyway. But we're working on getting our new SIM cards. Every country we will have to go through this process as soon as we cross the border. It's kind of a pain, not the funnest thing, but got to be done. So we have internet. We've been here probably about 30 minutes. I think this is probably going to take us about an hour to get done. Then we'll head back to the van. Part of it. First thing in the morning, we have to go to the vehicle insurance office. Insurance is required on your vehicle in Peru. Then the fun can start. A cell phone plan with 14 gigs of data free Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. It's gonna cost us $12.25 a month each. Just so y'all know how much data costs down here. We are up and at them bright and early. Kurt is driving through the crazy moto taxi chaos to get to the insurance company so we can get van insurance and be legal. Then, we'll be heading for somewhere fun. How is it driving in this mess, Kurt? Ah, uh, these motos just run around. They go where they want are. to, they're crazy, it's they're funny. I like the motorcycles in Medellin, except- They're right bigger. Here, we're four wide, I mean, they're just like whipping in and out. So, yeah, 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 okay. it's crazy. <laughs> we left our camp in a hurry this morning to be at the insurance place at eight o'clock when they opened and we did that we were here five minutes early actually kurt is inside he went in right at eight o'clock it's 8 15 now i'm curious how long this is going to take it can be difficult in some countries and a pain in the butt in some countries but while he was inside i cleaned up the van a little bit and look here he is well, there's 279 soaps, which is about $75 or $25 a month. She'll message us tomorrow when the underwriters get it back and approved, and we'll have to come by and pick it up. So we'll be here for, well, we'll be here tomorrow night, tonight, tomorrow night, probably. Yeah, I have not told them that yet. Uh, so right now it's 8.53, so the whole process took just under an hour, and... Kurt had messaged me while he was in there. This is not something they issue on the spot anymore because of the pandemic. Everything's done in the bigger cities. So we will get our insurance tomorrow, which means we're going to go back to our campsite by the river and edit. <laughs> and we'll pick back up with you guys when we're leaving this town. 
So if you're stuck waiting on vehicle insurance when you first enter Peru for a day or two, at least there's good food to try. So this is wrapped in a corn husk. And it's kind of like a dough, almost like a tamale dough. dough. I think it's just a corn. Maybe their version of like a cornbread. It is, but it's like a cornbread, but it definitely has more of a corn taste. So really maybe just like ground up corn. I don't know what binds it together. Water, it's good. Very tasty. Go. tasty. The theme tonight is finger food. On account of, we're probably gonna be racing the dark for our camp yeah. spot tonight. Yeah, but they set up shop literally right behind the van. We've got to try it, so here goes an empanada. Now, to be completely honest, I've already had one. And then we had to go back and get more, so I know these are good. Like a dozen to go. <laughs> They're good. And we got the first batch that were cooked for the night, so that was pretty cool too. All right, a couple things. These moto taxis look kind of like Model T cars, but in any event, they're everywhere. It's crazy. And we are here by the side of the road where we have been for the last couple hours waiting on our insurance. And this is where the ladies have set up to cook. But in any event, right here, 5.30 is what they're telling us now. And over here is where I got the little empanada and the empanadas and the little corn tamale. All right, we've just had a crash. How we haven't seen one already, I don't know. These two women that were in the median holding the babies were actually in that car, hopped out holding their babies. They seem okay. There was definitely a crash right here in front of us. These little moto taxis drive absolutely crazy. I hope everybody's all right. Looks like a motorcycle and a moto taxi. There were two policias right here. They ran over and began to help. I definitely think everybody's okay, but I can't tell for sure. I'm really glad those two women with the babies are okay. They looked terrified when they jumped out. I didn't have the camera going yet. I think everybody is okay, which is good news, especially for those two mamas. We got a Sot Electronica, so we got what we need. We have insurance on the van. Let's get out of this crazy That's craziness. Place. All right, just to get y'all caught up, it is 5.15, the insurance was late, but we are still hitting the road, getting out of this town. It's not the most comfortable place to have to hang out, we're gonna try to get about an hour down the road. We're out. Guys, this really is a necessary stop if you come in through the border that we came in. And also, you need to plan on staying an extra night. We didn't film a lot at the little camp spot we had down by the river, but it had mango trees and starfruit trees, and the birds would come around and play with the kitties. Anyway, it worked out as a place to stay not a destination other than getting insurance but the culture in peru it's amazing we've just crossed the border and all the differences we're seeing in the culture super rich and super cool man excited time for peru excited for started, peru yeah.
been a long time since we have chased a sunset but here we are our first few days in Peru Started acting. strangers in a strange land and this is a beautiful countryside we're coming right down through the rice fields right along the river here as the Sun comes down we're definitely starting to see more palm trees and it's definitely getting hotter. And that little town we just stayed at is, what, 90 degrees at, 90 95 during the day. Our campsites aren't always glamorous. We rolled into this gas station last night right as the sun was setting. The owner was super friendly, pointed us to a place back in the back. We're shielded from the road of the noise. And I gotta say, this may be the best gas station parking lot ever. Because look at what entertainment we have for the kitties. There are birds chirping everywhere. At least three peacocks. Guineas, a rabbit, chickens. These guys don't ever want to leave here. But it is just a gas station parking lot, so we are leaving right after breakfast. Headed on down the road. This time, not just to a campsite, but hopefully to our next destination. We are on the road. We are driving east. We have about a two and a half hour drive to what we hope is our next destination and campsite and there's something super cool to see there, something we've never seen. So we're super excited about that. But I thought this would be a good time to pop in and tell y'all, Peru is big, it is long, and everything we wanna see is kinda of spread out all over the country. And unfortunately, it looks like there will be several areas throughout Peru that are just long driving days with a lot of desert and straight roads. <laughs> But that's okay because each spot we get to after those drives is amazing. So Peru is loaded with good stuff. It's just there's subsections where there's just gonna be some driving. And that's where we're at right now. So we're only gonna pop back in if there's something exciting to show y'all. Other than that, we will see you at the next location with something super cool. So, so far in Peru, it has kind of been a pain in the butt to find potable water. You can't just pull up to a, you know, a faucet at a store or a hotel and fill up here. The water's not safe to drink. So we have to find the big five gallon jugs of water and pour it into our tank. And we've struggled to do that, honestly, since we've crossed the border. Yesterday, we were able to find one, one five gallon thing after driving around for like 30 minutes in that town of Hyann where we were waiting for the insurance. And now we've drove around for maybe an hour this morning in the past 10 minutes circling around the little streets of this town. I think this town is um, Buaga Grande. But we think we just found a store that it looks like looking through the window has five or six big five gallon jugs of water. Got it done. She was real curious about where we were going. So it was just really nice to meet her. She kind of started off with a grumpy little look and ended up with so it kind of made my day. And our tanks are full, our shower's full, so we're ready to go. All full of water. And you guys know Kurt has a way of making people be happier. So we left the, the city area where we got the water. We drove through really pretty rice filled areas. We would have loved to pop up the drone, but it was raining because it was cool. They were on all those little stair steps and then the rain came and was flooding the fields. It was really pretty. But now we are climbing up into the mountains, going through kind of a canyon area. I think our ultimate destination today should be around five or 6,000 feet, which will get us out of the heat and hopefully up into some trees. At 
least in this northeast corner of Peru, they struggle with the landslides and the mudslides and the rock slides and the floods, just like Colombia and Ecuador did. But you can definitely tell that it's, now that it's dry season, it looks like they're starting to repair, or at least try to do some repairs on the worst parts. We've passed a few construction zones, but there's also just some bad sections of road where it just buckles, where they struggle with water. All right, so we were supposed to veer to the left, but there's a river down there that is where the road used to be that we were supposed to be on. So we have gone right, I guess hoping that they've built some way for us to get around the washed out road and get back to our destination. There was definitely no road there anymore. A bridge washed out into the river. It's been about 10 minutes. We're still on our detour road. Who knows what's gonna happen when we get to the other side of this. There's a long line of cars waiting. That's probably maybe a three or four mile construction zone through there, Kurt? Yeah, definitely 30 minutes. Yeah. So I think we just realized we got lucky when we didn't get stopped at the other side and got waved on through. However, it looks like there's another truck <laughs> so Might be a long day. Two and a half hours of driving later, we arrive at a closed gate. Kurt managed to walk in there and find somebody. But our hopeful camp spot is a no-go. And what we were so excited to see, see on the top of that side, that cool hummingbird with those cool things that hook onto the back of his long tail. That's what we would have saw here. But he suggested a restaurant by a lake down the road. We're gonna head that way. All right, when plan A fails, what do you do? Plan B. Plan B. They got some watermelons here. Well, we're in this little town. You can see there's some cows. Lots of big roosters and chickens running around here. We've seen turkeys. And a lot of these structures, there you can see one that's going down that's brick. That one's wood. Over here, I guess they're kind of across between a waddle and daub and a log cabin. They kind of got some bigger logs in them. And these are probably made of some sort of mud structures as well. They just have the stucco over them. So the stucco is made with mud and a finer straw and kind of goes over it and protects the adobe or the wattle and daub. But here is plan B right here. And this is a lake. I'm not quite sure the name of it because we didn't really research this. The last place we stopped said there's space around the lake, so that's where we're headed. We're in Florida. Whoa. We're in Florida. All right, we are in Florida. And one thing that has remained prevalent as we've traveled through Peru is these little moto taxis, these Model T moto taxis. <laughs> Look, they got a band playing up there. I just no, either maybe lunch or like at a restaurant, a little fruit stand. All right, we're in the market area. It doesn't matter. Now is the time to slow down a little bit. Oh, she's making, oh, we're gonna have some lunch. She's making some good food. Look at this guy pulling around the concrete mixer. And, and he got to help oh, push him up the hill. hill. He, ah. he, he knew. He jumped right off of that thing to push. 
So this town is built kind of on a steep slope. So a lot of these buildings you're looking at right now are actually two or three stories, but they go down the mountain. Uh, these may not, but we saw some back there. Yeah, they definitely do. Waddle and Dob right there. And you can actually see the stucco on the outside too. Another interesting little community. The secondary roads through here are basically rough and bouncy dirt roads. Which, I think we're about to turn on one. Which, which you may see firsthand right here. And very fascinating place. In some ways, I feel like I was, I, we're in the wild, wild west, like kind of you'd picture it in those, some of those movies. And look at this road we get to turn down. <laughs> ah, never a dull moment. I did not see a whole heck of a lot of birds. I saw these little sort of brown ground birds that I've seen around here a lot, sort of like little sparrows. But there's all these flowers along here. And they're beautiful. They look kind of like wildflowers, but they're all sort of going to seed right now. So those little birds are having a heyday, picking away at the seeds and also the grass seeds. There's also some birds out with the cows and it's funny watching those grays. It's kind of marshy land, so the grass is real green and rich and the cows are just eating and pooping and eating and pooping. Anyway, 
nice relaxing morning. I'm gonna head back to the van. I'm gonna pop up the drone and give you a high level view of this area before we head on to our next spot. So, so our plan B was okay, but we did not spot the really cool hummingbird. Looks like we're not going to, but Kurt is putting in our next destination, which is an amazing place. So we have about a two and a half hour drive this morning to our next destination. It's mostly downhill, 6,500 feet elevation is the starting point. We're gonna get down around 2,500, 2,000. But the thing about these roads that wrap around the mountains, you guys have seen us on in several countries now, these, unlike the others, it's like they have half caves. They have carved away the side of the mountain for the roads. So like the falling rocks, instead of driving next to them, places you're actually driving under them. It's kind of, I don't know. Creepy. Creepy, crazy, <laughs> but also beautiful. So anyway, enjoy the ride. They got a tilapia at the bottom, Kurt. Well, there's one missing here. What's chalpa? So that's, oh, that's chalpa. Yes. Chalpa is chorizo. So they, they the chorizo. Hey, Pork. Rose? See, I almost got that one, Kurt. Then we could split them up. So this is juice of uh, the chocolate fruit, right? I have the Peruvian version of a stir fried rice. Some pork, some chorizo, some eggs, some vegetables. It's really flavorful and tasty. We have basically no idea what's in here. We think chicken and rice. Rice and chicken and rice. We're about to find out. How are you going to attack that thing? I don't know. I'm going to cut it right down the middle. It's like a big onion oh, bloom. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. Well, I think that's a piece of chicken sticking up so. there. She doesn't know what to do. No. Snow is struggling right now. She's peeling around the exterior. It's like a rice ball. So it's like chicken, the I chicken. think. They kind of coat it in, they pack rice in around oh, there it. Is. There's some That's what they do. They pack yeah. the rice around the chicken, put it in some kind of wrap, and then steam it. Mm. That's good. Almost like a tamale. It's a ton of food. All right, guys, we're going to dig in. And oh, by the way, I'm loving this cacao juice. We have made it to our next campsite. We are very, very pleased. We're parked right back there behind me. We just had a yummy lunch. We tried some authentic food. We are in the Amazon region of northern Peru, and we're going to stay here for a couple of days and do some tours around this area, get you guys out into the Amazon, but first, we need to show you around this amazing place. We're staying at a place that has this beautiful lake, a pool, a restaurant, good music, good vibes. And in the back corner, they even have some cool animals. Let's go see if we can find them. So Snow just stumbled across this little termite trail. And it's across actually the walking path. And you can see the termites have made sort of like tunnels. So when you walk across, you don't step on them. And they have the tunnels going all the way up. Now, I've seen those on the trees before, and I'll show you here in a minute. But there are some giant termite nests here. Well, look at those things. So we're down here in the Amazon. But you see us in long sleeve shirts. And that's because... There's mosquitoes here. Yeah, well, the good with the bad, right? So that right there is a blue morph butterfly. 
So inside of his wings, if he opens them up, they're like this fluorescent blue color. They're so cool. I can even see his little tongue there. I don't know if you guys can see that. I've made friends, but so has Kurt. <laughs> you see, red and verde. But Kurt has made a friend too. Ah, oh, look at there. Muy bonito. Como te llamas? Oh, see, sí, okay. What a fun little place in the back corner of this eco lodge. Now, we don't normally visit zoo type places, but this is more of an informal familia zoo, family zoo. We've got little, um, little kids showing us around. So, there's Australian emus these boars they're like little dogs so friendly a couple of macaws that I think were probably rescued here the big tortoises cool place and all the nice friendly little kids <laughs> como te llamas Adriana good Bruno mucho gusto gracias We've made good friends today. They like the Korean music, BTS, Michael Jackson, and some electronica music. And they all stay out here and help take care of all these fun animals. And they're very friendly. Yes. And they told us that those nut looking things up in those trees are actually like a fruit that you eat. We came to this destination knowing thanks to some lovely ladies that this place was probably going to be pretty good but i think it actually even turned out better we got to hang out with all these cool exotic different animals but even better was the all these little kids and the family and they were proud to show everything that they had around there and then on top of it they broke out their english homework books, homework <laughs> and Snow had a good time connecting with the little kids. And so it was just a really beautiful, authentic experience. And out here in the nature, in the jungle, and as I say this, I'm looking at like a giant tarantula. Oh, creepy. No. So we got to get a shot of that. I've made a buddy. I think he's going to walk me home. <laughs> so occasionally we get asked, do we ever tilt the solar? Why don't we tilt the solar more? And to be honest, down here in Central America, close to the equator, we just really haven't needed to tilt. Uh, but today, yesterday we spent the day under the trees. And today's an edit day. You can see we're here in the sun, kind of under the trees. So we're situated where it's best to tilt the solar panels. Also, this kind of gives where our fans are a bit more shade. So it doesn't superheat sort of the attic. It gives us airflow through there. Allows us to cool the van off nice. We were just sitting here and all of a sudden some monotitis showed up right outside our window. Monkeys, I don't know if you can see them. 
Jade Apple, he sees them. They're little tiny monkeys. Snow's trying to grab the big camera. She's hurrying. So the monkeys have moved down this tree line. Now we can see through the trees, there's water on the other side. So Snow's up here trying to get them. So they're definitely hanging out here. One's jumping over there off the trees. So I think the geese must have heard them because they're coming up here walking, trying to run them off. And you got snow here. I think she's on them, guys. I think she is on them. Look at that little one. You have it on auto, you're good. <laughs> they're all the way up in the tall palm trees. I wonder, oh, maybe they're eating that palm fruit. The monkeys are literally right up there. And here's our van door. Vanna, do you see the monotitis? So the sun's getting ready to set. The little monotiti, teeny tiny monkeys have settled in in the palm tree literally just above our van. We're gonna be sleeping under the monkeys tonight. This Villa Maria has been fantastic. We've gotten a few days of editing done. We've been able to relax. We've had some yummy, tasty meals. Went for a few dips in the swimming pool. I woke up this morning and I saw these monkeys everywhere. Now these things are little and they run around quick, so it's hard to get them. They're mostly the mono TT monkeys, the tiny ones, but there's also some cappuccinos. So basically the same ones we saw tomorrow, yesterday. <laughs> They're running over top of me. They're everywhere. I get them. <laughs> We slept under the monkeys last night for sure because the sun has come up and there are still monkeys everywhere. <laughs> they're so cute. They're, they're tiny, probably smaller than a squirrel if you don't count their tail. A little squirrel, a Florida squirrel. Oh, but they're adorable. They have little white faces and they move so fast. Oh, and they're getting these fruits off this tree. Oh, Kurt, one's eating right here. Oh, look at how cute they are. What a special way to wake up. And <laughs> they're running through the trees right by these peacocks that are sleeping up here. This place has several peacocks, five, maybe more, six. Oh, how adorable. I hope y'all enjoy it as much as we do. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.